Hey everybody, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer, and welcome to a new playthrough video. Tonight I am going to be playing Five Leagues from the Borderlands. It is a solo skirmish war game. This is battle report number three, turn number three. And in the last video I rolled up this scenario. It is a camp raid. I'm going up against six enemies, uh, three thugs, two bowmen, and one lieutenant. And this one is a, this one's got some unusual pre- pre-game rolls, which I'll explain. First, there's this centerpiece here. I, I've got a, a die with a one on it. I get four turns. If I can get a, one of my crew or one of my roster to here, I get a free loot roll that I can immediately use if it's a good good thing. Um, everything outside of this inner structure right here, I'm, I'm calling light cover. So it'll work for me and them if I'm shooting or doing anything like that. Uh, what else do I need? Oh, um, I've got my warband down here, but this is not their starting place. This particular game, you roll 2d6 and you add 12, and that is the minimum distance from the nearest enemy that you can put your characters, and they have to start on this edge over here. So let's roll it. That is a 9 plus 12 is 21. I will guarantee you that that is off the map. That is 18, and that is... 19, roughly 19. So that means that my characters will have to begin off the map right here on the blue. Now the question is, do I want to start them down here or up there, or do I want to split them up? Um, <laughs> I am, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put them in the, what is this? That's 15. So I'm going to put them here in the middle sort of behind these structures. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Don't really have a strategy, but we shall see. All right, so before the game begins, before the battle begins, the rules tell you that you can move your characters in one at a time, four inches, and then you roll 2d6. And if the total of the two die exceeds the number, the, the range between the nearest enemy and that character that moved, they are alerted and the battle begins. So it kind of gives you a chance to um, to sort of sneak in and get a get a position that you want. And I really haven't thought much about this, so maybe I should have before I started the camera going, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I want to have my good guys, my good fighters move in first. So I'm going to have Rilvan, who is one of my good fighters. He'll move in four. And the, the light brush is minus one to that roll, to that D12 roll. So let's go ahead and roll and see. I rolled a four. Can you see that on? The, yeah, a three one. So four inches from this enemy uh, is right there, but that's not enough to trigger his alert. Let me go ahead and move clack in and do the same thing. That is an eight. Now that's a possibility. No, it's not. Eight would be right here. And I'm doing it as the crow flies, like straight line, not around. Uh, let's move in Lyrak, who also has a bow. Move him in. And I need to roll these 2d6. That is an 11. That may have done it. Uh, oh yeah, that triggered it. Okay, so now the battle begins. These are as close as my guys got. They all know that there's somebody coming this direction and they will alert these other uh, these other guys. So now the game begins, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a d6 for each of my party members. The rules tell you that your very first initiative roll, you get a free one to place. So I'm going to take that. After that, the free rolls are done. I rolled a one, and that's it. I rolled a single, I got the single one. So I'm going to give that to... I'm going to give that to Jard, and Jard will use it to move in. Jard can sprint for eight, so let's get Jard in there. Eight would get him right there, so no problem. Still in hiding. Now, uh, now after the fast phase, which only Jard moved, is the enemy phase. Now, here's the deal. Uh... These two are supposed to be sentries, they're bowmen, and so they're guarding the area. Um, if I were playing, if I were playing this guy, this, and I did not know where my opponent's miniatures were, 
I would not automatically send all of my heroes or my warriors this way because I, I would be sort of suspicious that he might have placed some over here to come in. So I'm just sort of playing it as, you know, I would never, <laughs> I would not concentrate all my men in one area. So I'm going to leave this guy to sort of cover this back area. So my bowmen, if they want to fire, they can only move half of their half of their distance. His movement is five, so he can move two and a half, and he would be staring down here and not seeing anybody. Now, this guy would move two and a half, and the range is 24, which is plenty to see here, but there's so but even with light cover. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. He, if I'm gonna give, if I'm gonna take it, he's gonna take it. So he will, he will fire. He sees, uh, he, he sees Clack down here, uh, because of the range and the light cover. He needs a natural six, or a not a natural, a six to hit, and his combat is plus one. So I rolled a one, which means he missed. All right. So he did see Clack, and he alerts these guys. I see him. Um, this guy is going to move seven. So he would move five and then two more. And he's like, yep, there they are. This guy's going to move seven through this pass right here. And he would go, yep, there they are. This guy's going to go seven this way. The leader will move where his men say they see. So he'll move seven here. And this guy already shot and fired, so... That is it for the enemy phase. So all of my guys are going to get to go now. Um, let's see. I really don't want Jar to take another hit from this era guy. So he's going to move slightly out of range. But I don't think you can see this. There is a straight line right here. Just so, same with the cover. So he needs a, a six. His combat is plus plus one, so he needs a five or higher to hit. And I rolled a two, so he missed. Uh, I'm using dice set to six to indicate when a character is already, when their turn is over. Uh, Rilvin, Rilvin's gonna move up to meet this guy. Actually, he wants to pull him. So he's gonna taunt and move this way and taunt him to try to pull him in this direction. And Jard's already moved. He's moved. Uh, this guy right here is going to... Oh, yeah, he can engage. All right, so this is Lyrak, who is plus zero combat. Um, and he's going into combat with a plus one. So for combat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use red die for the enemy and green die for my guys. So it's plus one for the enemy, plus zero for me. Uh, and I win. So this is a three-step process. So I'm the attacker. I'm, a, I'm fighting aggressively or ferociously, so I win. Let's see if I get through his armor. I have to roll a two or higher. I rolled a two. His armor's one. You have to beat the armor. Then his toughness is four, and you have to beat that. So I need to roll a five or six to knock him out of the game. And I rolled a four. It's not enough to um, defeat him, but he is wounded and stunned, which does help me down the road. All right, that was the first round of the combat. I still have, I'm still the attacker, and I'm plus one now because he is stunned. So it's plus one to plus one. I rolled a four to his six. He becomes the attacker, and it's plus one, plus one, and I rolled a natural six, so I become the attacker. He becomes the defender, um, but that was the end of it. You don't take any damage when you're the defender. So since I became the attacker now, we just put an inch between us. He will lose the stunned on his next turn, but he will still be wounded. Two wounds will knock a character out of a game. What else do I have here? Okay, now I've got... Okay, he moved. I need to put a die. I've got my wizard who hasn't done anything. The wizard has... Distract, explore, weaken. I don't know. None of those. I'm not going to... He's just going to move in. He's just moving in four. He may need to come in. And he's got a heal spell, so he may need to use that. Of course, Dardor now has a speed of seven. And I want him... Yeah, I'm going to put him right next to... Right next to my uh, Rilvan. And to taunt this guy. 
All right, that is it for the slow phase. Is that right? Everybody move, 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 move. Yep, so pick up all the dice. It is now turn two. There are no casualties on the enemy side, so I don't do any morale rolls. If I had knocked a character out, I would roll 1d6 for every character knocked out in a turn, and on a 1 or a 2, uh, the enemy fails a morale for each 1 or 2, and that many enemies flee the battlefield. So if I knocked out 2, I would roll 2d6, and on if I rolled a 1 or a 2 on any one of these, let's say both of them, two enemies would flee. So that's, that's kind of cool. All right, now I roll initiative. I, oh, that's awesome. I got a 1 and a 2. Oh, no, that's not awesome. I thought I had more than that. So I can assign the 1 and the 2. I'm going to assign the 1 to... I'm going to assign it to Clack. Clack gets the 1, and the 2 goes to... Lirac. Which one? Oh, Lirak's right there. Why did I send him in? He should have shot with a bow. I don't know why. It's, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, Lirak is a... Lirak's a one, so I could give him the one, and I could give Clack... Well, the two would have to go to Jard or Rilvan. I don't want Rilvan fighting just yet. So I'll give the one... I want that, I want that melee bonus. So I'm going to give the one to Clack and the... <laughs> oh, shoot. I'll give the two to Jard and the one to Lirak. The reason I'm doing that is I want that combat bonus of having an ally near you. So Jard is going to move within one inch of Lirak. Um, Jard could attack, couldn't he? He's got a Warhammer, and his combat is plus zero. Yeah, might as well. I'll have, I'll have Jard attack, because his Warhammer is plus one versus armor, which is good. All right, so he becomes the attacker. He's plus one combat because he's got Lyrak next to him as an ally. So I'm plus one to the enemy's plus one. He is wounded, so one more wound and he's gone. I'm the attacker. I rolled a natural six to his five, mine is seven. So I definitely win. Does it go through his armor? I need to roll a two or higher. I rolled a five. And because I chose Ferocious Fight, I get to add plus one to this toughness roll. And I rolled a two, which is fine because it's still enough to give him a wound and knock him out. He's out of the game. So two wounds will do it. Um, let me double check that. If it's two to six, if it, uh, if it, if it is equal or below toughness, they are wounded and stunned. Yes. All right. So it went through the toughness. And he got wounded or stunned. That was his second wound, so he's out. All right, that was good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> All right, um, now that frees up Lyrak, who is, who can now move. And Lyrak, I need to keep Lyrak in the fight. So Lyrak will move his maximum right down here behind this wall. He's going to hide and ambush, hopefully, when the enemy comes by. All right. So that is everybody has moved in the fast phase. Now it's the enemy phase. Um, leader will move his full seven. Which will put him right there next to this guy. I'm going to move this. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave that tree there because it will remind me there's interference here. Uh, this guy will move seven. Is that, is that enough to get to Lyrak? I don't believe it is. It's not. He is right there. <laughs> this guy will move seven, and that puts him sort of right behind him. Uh, one, two, three. This guy right here will move two. Doesn't see anybody. Now he's starting to get suspicious that there is nobody over here. Um... And then, of course, this guy will move two. And, yeah, he can see. Well, I don't know. There's This guy's between him. I don't remember the rule on can you fire through an ally. I cannot remember. But you know what? With all the light cover and his enemy, his friends there, he can't do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rule that he cannot because 
He's got two guys very close, and there's lots of, like I said, light cover through here. I didn't have enough bushes to, to do it. So no, so he'll just move his full, he'll move his full move and try to get a better shot on the next time around. That is the enemy phase. Now it is the slow phase, which is basically everybody else I have. The, okay, now he's a ranged weapon. You know what? My wizard is going to cast on Rilvan. He's going to cast shield. Shield gives me protection against ranged weapons. They have to roll a natural six to hit for two rounds that last. So for the next two turns, Rilvan will be protected. But I have to roll a, well, the casting roll is six or higher, but he's got a casting of plus one, so I need to roll a five or higher total. And I rolled a four. Four plus one is five. That is not enough to cast it. So he's down a spell. Spells. He's down one, and he failed it. So Rilvan is not protected. Um, and then I'm going to move the wizard out of, out of target range of those guys. As a matter of fact, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put him up in the bushes. He's hiding. Um, put a six there. All right. Who's next? Uh, Jard, or Clack, did not uh, do anything last turn, so he will, he will have loaded his crossbow. So he will fire. Well, he could step out and fire at the leader, but he doesn't know the leader's there, so it'll have to be one of these guys. He'll fire at the closest one, which is this guy. It's within six, and it's open. So it's six, that's a three or higher, but his combat is plus one, so he needs a two or higher. I rolled a five, so he hits. With the crossbow, it's plus one versus armor, so his armor's one, so obviously it gets to his armor. And now... I need to roll a five or six to defeat the toughness. I rolled a one, but it doesn't. Uh, and if you roll a one, the character is stunned. So that's okay. He's not wounded, but he's stunned. Um, and that is Clack. And that leaves Rilvan and Dardor. So I tell you what, Dardor, Rilvan's gonna do it. Rilvan will initiate an attack. He is plus one. To hit plus one combat but because he's stunned he gets another one and he's also within one inch of Lyrak you know what Lyrak moved just close enough I'll go ahead and give him that and he, he moved close enough to get the bonus so he's plus one plus two plus three on the die versus plus one plus three versus plus one I got a six to his four so I win does it get through his armor it does uh, his armor was one. I rolled a two. Does he get through his toughness? I need to roll a... F it doesn't matter because this will be his... Yeah, it does. He's stunned, not wounded. So I need, to, I need a five or six to knock him out. And I rolled a one. A one is another stun. And I think two stunned... Uh, no, wounded is the one where if you get two, right? A wounded a second time they're removed. If they recover if they are stunned they're recovered from stun of the exchange unless they're stunned again. A character that is stunned or recover. Okay, so he's stunned again. Not wounded. But I still get two more two more attacks. Uh, I'm still the attacker. So I'm at plus three to his plus one. I rolled a seven, so I win again. Oops, sorry. Does it get past his armor? It does. Does it get a five or six on a toughness? It does not. But now he is wounded and stunned again. And all I need to do is hit again, and that should give him the second wound. I'm at plus three to his plus one. Seven to three, I win. Does it get past his armor? One and armor is, it does not get past his armor. I have to beat the armor. Uh, if it's equal to the armor rating, they are stunned. <laughs> so he's still wounded and still stunned, and that's the end of the combat. Um, and obviously, Rilvan moved, and so did uh, Dardor, because he moved to give him that bonus. And that is it for the slow phase. Turn three, although, hold on, i got to roll morale. 
So I roll a d6, I knocked one guy out. So on a roll of one or two, somebody's gonna flee. I rolled a three, so nobody runs away, which is unfortunate. All right, let me roll initiative. Uh, I've got all six of my guys. Come on, ones and twos. I got a two, a single stinking two. I can give that to Jard or Rilvan. Jard. Jard is right here, so he can't do much. He couldn't get away, so I'll give it to Rilvan. Rilvan needs to wipe this guy out. All right, Rilvan steps in. He's plus three again versus this guy who's wounded and stunned. Plus three to plus one. Uh, six to six is a tie. So on a tie, the combat is broken, I believe. Let me double check that. Uh, <laughs> on a draw, the defender retreats one and the attacker remains in place. Okay, so that's fine. So he moves back. <clears throat> All right, so he moved. Now it is the enemy phase. Let's do this. This guy is going to move here. He still doesn't see anything. He's cautious. On his next turn, he's going to run in. Uh, the Let's resolve it from here. This guy will step in to fight. He's wounded, so he's automatically... And wounded and stunned. That doesn't go away until his turn. Or Actually, that's the stunned does go away. He's wounded. So I'm just plus two to his plus one. And I win, so I become the attacker. So now I'm plus two to plus one. And I lost. He's the attacker. And he wins. Okay, so uh, does it get through my armor of two? It does. Does it get through my toughness of three? It does not. But I am now wounded and stunned. All right, this guy is going to come around and attack Lyrak. Lyrak is plus one to his plus one, but I'm the defender. I rolled a three to his six. He wins. Does he get through my armor? Armor is on Lyrak is, yes, he does get through the armor. Uh, toughness is three, and he does. So Lyrak is out. Ow, ow, ow. The... Captain moves forward, but he doesn't see the guy behind the wall, so I'm going to get a sneak attack there. This guy will not shoot, but he'll move a couple inches and prepare to shoot since he's engaged with two guys here. That's not cool. And then, of course, this guy was going to, he's going to run in. At this point, he's going to see him. All right. So, man. Well, I don't really have a choice. Rilvan has got to win this fight. So it's, it's the, and who, this is slow phase, and Rilvan went on that one. So Rilvan's already gone. Is that right? Didn't I say that? Yeah. So the only ones that can go are Clack, who can, he fired a crossbow, so he has to reload this turn. So he will just move in and fight. He will fight this guy who is wounded. There's no advantage here because they're both getting the plus one so it's just clack is plus one to the enemy's plus one i got six to its three i win armor i definitely go through its armor and he is wounded so i need a five or a six and i rolled a three which is enough to wound him but that's okay he is out um and that means he went he's done now Lyrak will move toward, uh, you know what? He's still got that tough. The wizard will step out and cast Weaken on the captain. Weaken removes the tough trait. Tough means he cannot be stunned, which is not good. So I need an eight or higher, actually a seven or higher because his casting is plus one. I rolled a four. So he failed and he loses a spell. He's only got one spell left. So the... Lyrak will step in, which is probably a very bad idea, and he's plus zero to the captain's plus two. But he's the attacker, so he's aggressive. And I did win. Six to his four. Uh, six to four. That means I win. Armor is, his armor is one, and I did get through the armor. His toughness is five, so I have to roll a six to kill him. And I rolled a five. So he cannot be stunned but he can be wounded. 
Uh, and because of the toughness, if the toughness is equal or below toughness, they are wounded and stunned. So he's just wounded. He's not stunned because he has that tough thing. And that leaves Jard to step over two inches, and he will fire an arrow. He's within six inches of the lieutenant, so he needs a three or higher. I think it's three. Within, yeah, three or higher. Come on. I rolled a three. So he does hit with the arrow. The arrow is it's plus zero versus armor. So I need to roll a two or higher. I rolled a three. So it gets through the armor. And now it doesn't matter. Uh, unless I roll a natural one, he'll take another wound. And I rolled a four. So the lieutenant is out with a second wound. I needed that. I, this, by the way, this is turn four, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to make that loot roll, so that's okay. Um, so the wizard went. Jard went. And everybody went. So that is the slow phase. So now it is time for morale. Um, let's see. I, need, I, I took out two guys, so I get to roll two dice. I rolled a two and a six. So on the two, the enemy farthest from me, which would be him, flees. So this guy flees. I don't get a morale roll for that, however. And now it's initiative, and I only get to roll five dice. One, two, three, four, five. I rolled a one and a two. That's all I need. I'm going to give the wizard a one, and I'm going to give Rilvan the two. Wizard is going to cast his last spell. He's going to cast Heal, which is 6 plus, so I need a 5 or higher. I rolled it, so that takes away the wound from Rilvan. So he is gone. Rilvan is now going to go, and Rilvan is going to attack this guy with a bonus. So Rilvan's plus 1. He gets plus 1 because he's got an ally, so he's plus 2 to the enemy's plus 1. I lost, so he becomes the attacker. I win, so I become the attacker. And I lose, and so he becomes the attacker. So I get pushed back an inch, and that is it for me. Now, enemy phase. There's only two enemies left. One, two, three, four. Yeah. All right, so this guy is, is already engaged with Clack. So it's plus one to plus one, and he's the attacker. Six to seven to six. So he wins. Armor is my armor on Clack is one. He rolled a one, so he did not get through the armor. So no big deal there. Kind of big deal. This guy is going to move and fire at Rilvan. He needs a five or higher to hit. He rolls a four. He misses. Um, I <laughs> needed that. Uh, so he moved or he attacked, and so did this guy. Now it's my turn. Can I finish this game? Um, slow phase. So, Clack now has Clack now has a I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to move this guy in and he'll get the plus one. So, Lyrak is plus one to plus one. Let's see how that plays out. He wins, so he becomes the attacker. Uh, we tie, so there is a one-inch gap between us. So he moved. Now I'm going to have Jard fire an arrow at him. Jard is within six, and that is a three or higher. That hits. Uh, armor, does it get through the armor? It does. His armor was one. And now he needs a five or six. Yeah, five or six to knock him out. And I rolled a three. That's not enough, but it does stun and wound him. Now, I will use <coughs> Clack to fight. Clack is now plus two to the enemy's plus one. And I'm the attacker. I rolled a six, so I win. Does I get through his armor? I do. And the toughness, I doesn't matter. He's wounded, so he takes a second wound, and he is out. Um, that, that means he moved, so did Jard. I think that is it. 
All my guys have moved. Yes, all my guys have moved. All the enemies have moved. It is now a morale roll. I get to roll one die on a one or two. That last guy will run. I rolled, can you see it? I rolled a one. So the last guy flees. So I win the battle. I hold the field. But I did lose Dardor. So let's go see what happens to Dardor. I'll do the post rolls for this game uh, after I take a break. I need some water. But before I cut the video, I want to go ahead and roll for what happens to him. Uh, let's see. It's back towards here. See what happens. Uh, it's on page... Here it is. It's on page 188. He is a follower. So I'm rolling on this table right here. I roll a D100. Green is high. I rolled an 88, which is... Knocked out zero. I don't know if you can see that as the shine. Knocked out zero, so he loses no recovery time, so he is good to go. All right, I'm going to take a short break, get some water, and I'll come back and I will do the post-game rolls and XP and all that. Very fun game, very stressful game. Uh, I'll be back just in a bit. Okay, time to do the post-game rolls. Um... This was turn three, so it's turn three post rolls. I don't even think there are any rolls. Yeah, yeah, I just did one. All right, so let's do step one, which is adventure points. Um, victorious enemy threat or raid. I did a raid, so I get to roll a d6 for adventure points. I rolled a six, so plus six adventure points. Awesome. I haven't been using those. I need to really look into that. Um, defeat a lieutenant or captain, plus one. So yes, I defeated a lieutenant. And finish a contract, I did not. All right, step two, check for injuries. I already did, uh, what was his name? Um, Dardor did not get knocked out. He, oh, he got knocked out, he didn't get killed. So that's good. Uh, let's see. Check for advancement. That's XP points, I'll do that in a minute. Roll for loot, page 196. You get to roll once on the loot table. All right, page 196. Roll a D100. Okay. Green is high. Uh, 21 is weapon. All right, so go to the weapon subtable. Roll a D100. That is a 31, which is a bastard sword. So I got a bastard sword. Okay, let's go back. Uh, da, 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 check for advancement. Loot. Step five. Oh, that was step four, sorry. Uh, step five is check for roll for unusual finds. If you held the field, I did. Roll a D100 and roll on the unusual finds on page 190. That's the next page. Okay, uh, this is a raid, so I'm on the middle column there. That is a 31 again. 31 is remains of a victim. Uh, okay, remains of a victim. Where is that? <laughs> uh, that's not... Oh, here it is. Whoever this was, they left behind a letter and a bit of cheap jewelry. Randomly select a settlement on the region map. If the warband takes the letter and jewelry there, roll D6 to see what they get. Okay, so I found a corpse. So the next... Uh, Pick a settlement. Um, okay. Uh, I am actually here. So the closest thing to me going back is, well, North Station, which is a town. So I'm going to go, if I go to North Station, uh, I can do a D6 random on page 189. Okay. Okay. Um, and let's just roll to see what it is. Well, no, you're supposed to do that once you get there. So we'll do that. Um, okay, that was the unusual find. Let's keep going. Uh, step six, settle in. Uh, well, okay, so I either have to camp or travel to a town, village, city, or whatever. I'm too far away. I don't want to do an, I don't want to do a... Um, I'm in this area, this Lost Oak Forest. So, if you're in the same map area as a settlement, you can begin the next campaign turn in town or in camp. If you're anywhere else, 
you will begin the next campaign in camp. So I am actually in camp now. And step seven says news travels. Roll a D100 on the news table below. Okay. That is a 53. Outriders of the local army have been patrolling the region. Next campaign turn, you do not have to roll on the travel table when journeying somewhere. All right, so no travel roll. That's good because that will get me to North Station Town should I choose to do it. Next campaign turn. So turn number four, I don't have to make a, a travel table within this region. Uh, uh, yeah, that's cool. All right, let's keep going. Oh, uh, that's it. Um, now it's XP. All right. Uh, survived the encounter. Well, they all survived, so everybody gets plus one XP. Uh, well, Lyrak, or Durden's a follower. He doesn't get XP. So plus one XP to all my heroes, because they all survived. <clears throat> Enemy leader slain. There was no leader. Uh, held the field, plus one XP to all heroes. So plus two XP to all heroes now. Um, that takes all of them up, not quite to nine, which would give me another advancement roll. So I've still got a little bit more to go. Um, is that all I get? Plus one, the advancement table. That's a, that's XP. Follower advancement. I knew there was something else. So follower advancement. Followers do not make rolls. Instead, they they for each follower who remains on the table at the end of the battle. So only. Lyrak remained because because Dardor got knocked out. For each follower who remains on the table, roll a D100 can, and roll check the flash of insight. Okay, uh, that is an eight, which is nothing gained. All right, nothing gained, and that's it. That's it for turn number three. Okay, the next video in this series of uh, for five uh, five leagues from the Borderlands will be the pre-rolls for turn four. Pre-rolls for turn four. Um, I hope you're enjoying watching this. I do. I like playing this game. It's very stressful. It's so stressful because you have such a small war band and it's so easy for one of them to get knocked out. I mean, the toughness, my toughnesses are low. Armor is low. It's really quite, quite stressful, but that was fun, and I got lucky in that my follower did not get uh, permanently killed or anything like that. All right, so the next video uh, will be the pre-rolls where I will determine the next battle that gets played out, and uh, we'll see where things go from there. Until then, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me. If you have the book or the digital book like I do, uh, I hope you're playing this game, and I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. If you do not have it and you like what you see here, you should definitely consider getting the game and playing it. It is a great, fun solo game, and uh, I highly recommend it. All right, Jim the Tabletop Engineer. Until then, until the next video, everybody, take care.